Hi everyone, it's day four, it's Thursday at Walt Disney World and we're at the Beach Club Resort. Um, I had to buy a new camcorder yesterday because my other one broke, but I wanted to vlog, I wanted to carry on doing Fairy Godmother videos, so I went to Walmart and got another camera. It's exactly the same as my last one, just a lot cheaper, so win-win. Um, today I'm going to Animal Kingdom, so as you can see, I'm going to be a wilderness explorer and then tonight it's Mickey's not so scary Halloween party at the Magic Kingdom so I'll film what I can and see if I can get any good footage. Bye! Here's Animal Kingdom, just arrived. So there's a photo class photographer over here so I'm going to get a picture. This is a character called Divine and she's like made of leaves and trees and she's just hanging out here at Animal Kingdom Look at Divine, isn't she amazing? Here she comes So we're just coming into the main bit of the park. This is the Tree of Life. And the park's just waking up. Look who's here. Later. You have to bark into it. I think you should demonstrate it. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> you bark into there and it tells you how good your barking is. Oh, all there. Should I do it? Yeah, go on then. Go on. That was a pathetic bark. I mean, I love you. You smell like a small postman. That is a nice smell. <laughs> safari outfit on so I'm gonna line up and meet him. Hey Uncle Scrooge thank you <laughs> bye oh. look at that this is a very very short line to meet launch pad not quack there he is. Hi, Pad. Very short line to meet him. So we came into Restaurant Saurus, and this is what it looks like. All dinosaurs everywhere. And this is pretty empty right now. That's like dinosaur skeletons. Nobody's eating in here much because the park just opened. But you can get drinks, you can get food, but it's not very open yet. So that's restaurant Saurus. Oh no, live dinosaurs! Uh oh. That's Daisy. Oh, they're gonna be here? Yeah, they're oh right there. Oh my goodness, they're Look coming. Here they come. Oh, so cute. Hiya. That's Dal. Oh, that's Chip. Good morning. Hi. So 
so cute. This is Expedition Everest. It's a ride you can do. It's a pretty fast roller coaster. And the roller coaster goes through that tunnel there. So we're going to do that in a minute. But first of all, we're going to have a photo pass photo in front of the mountain. So Aaron's just queuing up there for me. You can see how cool it is here at Animal Kingdom. Expedition Everest, here it comes. So beautiful. Going to ride Expedition Everest. We're coming through the fast pass line. We had a fast pass. And see what this one is like. take a look up above you you're going to notice that there is an animal spot again that helps to identify some of the different animals we might be seeing out here on the reserve today those are called greater kudu and they're the second tallest species of antelopes that live out here on the reserve standing about 55 inches at the shoulder now we can tell that those ones we're seeing are females because the males are going to have long spiral horns that'll grow to reach about six feet tall and now we're going to make our way on down to the safi river now they are nocturnal and so they're going to sleep during the day they can actually sleep under the water and they have a natural reflex that will rise under the surface whenever they need to breathe and then at night time they are going to come out of the water to graze now adult male hippos can grow to be about 5500 pounds fully grown but on average they only eat about 80 to 90 pounds of vegetation a day if anyone on this truck is under four feet tall when hippos open up their mouths you can walk right inside I see lots we also have some whitish grayish birds out here. These are called pink back pelicans. They get these are the largest species of crocodile. They can grow to be about 16 feet long and weigh in at just around 500 pounds. Now they can't go about 15 miles an hour on land, which doesn't sound like us, but our truck only gets around six feet tall. So to all of the kids that I have on board, baby giraffes are about as tall as your dad. And so it makes a lot of sense that a group of giraffes is called a tower. Now just like that oak hoppy we saw earlier, giraffes do have that long prehensile tongue. And so their tongue can grow to be about like their own eyeballs. And they're a very dark purple, almost black color, which scientists believe help to protect them from the sun. That's because giraffes are going to spend about 20 hours a day eating. And only about 30 minutes a day are spent sleeping that they have on their fur. And a lot of the time people hear the word dog and they think they're kind of cute and cuddly like the dogs they have at home. They are pretty cute, but I don't. They're actually hollow on the inside with a honeycomb-like structure that runs through them that helps to circulate their blood and will regulate their body temperature. And so those horns actually help to keep them cool. Now they are the only domesticated animals that live out here on the reserve, so we can actually tell that they are Maasai giraffes. Now each giraffe spots are totally unique to that and a lot of power to them. All right, guys, it looks like we do have a split in the road up here, so do we want to try to find some elephants out here? Yeah. Yeah? All right, then we're going to head on into Monkey Point, which is elephant territory. Now, Monkey Point got its name from a troop of mandrels who have made their home over here. And so mandrels are because males do tend to spend the majority of their adult life on their own because they get a little bit aggressive towards one another. And I actually know of another really popular elephant hangout spot I want to take us to. So we're just going to take the entire time that I've worked here. And they just recently reopened it. And it's going to take us to the exact same place that road was going to take us to. I think they just call this, like, the scenic route. Okay. And it does look really scenic out here. So they really hit the nail on the head with that naming. All right, now here's the thing. I don't like driving across bridges all that much. I mean, nothing bad has ever happened to me on a bridge. It's kind of just an irrational fear of mine that just freaked me out a little bit. Oh, gosh, here we go. Lean to the right. Lean to the right. Balance it out. Keep leaning until we get off the sand. I don't want that to happen again. Keep leaning, everyone. Just keep leaning. Just keep leaning. 
So I guess I spoke too soon when I said that nothing bad has ever happened to me on a bridge because clearly something bad has happened to me on a bridge. Um, but I kind of feel like that was a bonding moment for all of us, you know? Like, group. And so they do live in matriarchal societies that are led by the oldest female. Now it actually makes a lot of sense that the mom's 100 pound babies. So just think about that one for a second, moms. Makes sense they want to keep those little ones around, right? Now, unfortunately, elephants are becoming increasingly harder to find in the wild because of issues like poaching and habitat loss. And so elephants are migratory, which means they're gonna walk for their food and water. Now, those migration routes are being disrupted by humans who have made their way onto them to mine for a mineral ore called coltan, which is being used- the old one. Just take it to any electronic store. They will properly recycle it for you. That Colton's gonna get used from your old phone into a new one. And that's just one really small thing you can do that's gonna end up making a really huge impact in some elephants' lives. Now, up ahead here on our left-hand side, there is a flamboyance of greater flamingos. They are the largest, as well as the lightest shade pink of any flamingos. And they're not born that color. They're actually born a light gray. It takes about one to two years for that pink coloration to develop. And they get it from their diets. Natural predators in the wild. Their biggest threat, once again, is humans who are poaching them for their horns. Now, not all that long ago, they were poached to the point of extinction in the wild. And so thanks to animal reintroduction programs, nowadays their populations are rising, but they are still being poached and they're still an endangered species. Now if you guys take a look at these white rhinos and think to yourselves, they don't actually look all that white, what is she talking about? You'd be correct, they're gray, although they do look a little bit multicolored right now because they like to roll around in mud to cool themselves down. But the name white rhino actually comes from the Afrikaans word vite. Now that means wide and refers to the wide mouths they have that they use for grazing. So kind of one of those lost in translation type things because that name does not refer to their color at all. The effects of poaching. And so there's actually a time where there were only 17 of them left in the entire world. But they can only maintain those speeds for a few hundred yards before they need to stop and take a break. And that's because their bodies are built for speed, not necessarily power or distance. Now they are diurnal animals. What that means is they're going to be awake and active during the day and then they're gonna to go to sleep at night. 20 hours every single day are spent sleeping and then they're gonna wake up at nighttime to hunt. Now they're actually a special type of nocturnal. It's called crepuscular. What that means is they're gonna be most active at dawn and dusk. Now lions live in groups called a pride. That pride consists of one male and multiple females. And those females are all gonna to get together as a group to go out to hunt. The reason that they hunt as a group like that because a lot of the time they're not faster than what they're trying to catch. And so they kind of need to hang, or gang up on it to be able to uh, catch it. And the male is gonna stay behind to guard the territory as well as any cubs. And so he is gonna be the protector of that pride. Now the reason that lions hunt at night crash. And that name crash is kind of another misconception about them because they're really graceful animals when they run. They're actually gonna gallop. Now that lion's roar actually sounds nothing like you would think it sounds like, that kind of stereotypical lion roar you can see hearing. It's actually a tiger. And so if you guys want to hear a lion's roar, I do recommend stopping back later on this evening around sunset. Like I said, they are most active around at dusk. And so that's normally a really great time to be able to hear some lions roaring. That way their tusks are facing out and they're always prepared to protect themselves. Now coming up on our left hand side there is an ostrich and there's actually some eggs out here on our right hand side. Those are ostrich eggs. So those are the largest bird eggs in the world which makes sense because they come from the largest birds in the world. They weigh about three pounds or the equivalent of two dozen chicken eggs and they have a really thick strong shell that's said to be so strong an adult human male can stand on them and they would not break. Now, ostrich are flightless birds, which I personally think is a really good thing because seeing them flying overhead would be terrifying. But their wings are not useless to them. They actually use them to help steer while they run and they can reach speeds of about 40 miles an hour. So they are pretty fast animals. Now, they're not necessarily the smartest. Their brains are actually smaller than their eyeballs. Frogs, snakes, and even other small birds, basically whatever fits the bill. Now these scimitar horned orcs are really cool animals. They can go about nine months out of the year without drinking water. 
The reason that they can do that is because they run at a higher body temperature than other mammals, and they're not going to start sweating until they reach 115 degrees Fahrenheit. The animals will make sure of that. Please gates up ahead here do signify the end of our time together. So I'm just going to drop you guys off at the warden's post up ahead here. Now, if I had any wilderness explorers on board today, you were riding the Simba one. That is Simba, like the lion, and then the number one for my wilderness explorers. <laughs>